Hello there, and welcome to another Starfy video. Today we have the uh, the final, currently the final. Uh, there may be more along the way if uh, if Nogroth gets around to uh, if he kind of gets inspired to build. Um, so this is uh, basically like the the spacer build we've been doing it with Nogroth. Um, and if you've checked the previous videos, basically the to make it kind of a long story short. Spacers ships in the space in general in Starfield are kind of underwhelming. Um, they have no real kind of like uh, like structure or stuff, which makes sense because they're spacers. But their ships are way too uniform, and they're basically just reskinned base vessels. So Nogroth had this idea to basically make a faction uh, of spacers that kind of operated. They were spacers, but they were more loosely on how they operate. Um, and this is. This is kind of the uh, the flagship, almost, I, I guess you could say. So, Nogroth, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. And so if you just want to, obviously, if you want to give a little bit of a brief synopsis, even though, you know, we've covered it, but just in case somebody, this might be their first uh, entry to, or there might be their first video they're watching of this series. If you want to give a brief synopsis on Orozco's uh, Spacer Faction, uh, or sub-faction, I suppose, and then a little bit of lore about this ship. Okay. First of all, about the faction, they're a ragtag group of former Freestar military that were basically, they saw the writing on the wall when both factions started prosecuting and persecuting their former soldiers. And so they banded together and, you know, they had to put food on the table. So they became pirates and spacers. Uh, this ship, uh, actually, lore-wise, developed from another ship that's on my blog into what this is, and it, it's it is the flagship of the the spacer faction, which is led by a guy named Orozco, and this is his ship, it, it, so, hence the name Orozco's Prize, and this is kind of uh, their their headquarters. This is where they would all meet up and discuss tactics or or plans for the season before going their separate ways and carrying out their, their individual agendas. And I will say it, it is a very unique vessel. It gives me very Hope Tech vibes uh, with the kind of the landing gear and the layout. But obviously we've got some other pieces kind of strapped on. The design philosophy for this ship, because I know with a lot of the ships, they were kind of originally designed. They're originally like say vanilla ships that you modified from a roleplay point of view. Is this one of those ships where it was based on something, or is it a kind of a custom design you came up with? Well, it wasn't directly uh, evolved from any existing ship. I can see similarities in there, like with the, the pickup and stuff like that, but that was not intentional. It's just the, the result that I love Hope Tech so much that that probably played into the design philosophy as I was building it. I don't yeah. remember what the donorship was, but uh, I think it's irrelevant at this point. Yeah, it's, it's like it, it, like you're saying, like it, it looks a little bit like the pickup, but that's kind of just because it's kind of that kind of shape with the landing gear and stuff. So the, um, so basically what you're saying is this is kind of like, you know, it's, it's the flagship. This is where they kind of group up and stuff. And, you know, when they're kind of planning what to do, uh, when when this ship is kind of out and about, like what what is it kind of like? What does it tend to do? Like, is it is it your standard? Like, it's going to be doing some pirating sort of stuff. Is it going to be doing oh, yeah. more? Yeah, it's definitely a pirate ship. Um, it, it's again the, the command center where everybody comes and goes, so they'll probably have a, a pre planned route that the ship takes and places that it would frequent, so that they could exchange messages. Being that there's no faster than light communications, they, it would probably be where a lot of messengers dock up, pass on their message, and then move on. Maybe take a, a rest if they're in a small ship that doesn't have a lot of amenities and then move on so the next ship can, can dock and do its thing. In between that, they're, they're out there raiding just like any other ship. All right, all right. All right, so let's, we'll take a look at the stats. So it's got a fuel of A20, which uh, comes from the... It's got a pretty large uh, fuel tank there on the front. The I think it's the 700T, which we'll check in the breakdown. Then we've got uh, two... 
uh, 500T helium-3 tanks. So it's got a lot of fuel, which again kind of could play into that uh, where like if a ship docked with it and it needed to transfer some fuel, it could definitely do that. It's got a hull of uh, 1,518, so very tanky. It's got a carrying capacity of 400 uh, or 4,620. 480 of that is shielded, so there can be a bit of smuggling. It's got C-class reactor, 40 power, crew of 8, jump range of 30 light years. This thing can jump, which is quite nice. It's got best shields in the game at 1,600. And then it's got two sets of particle weapons that are both turreted. Now, I will say, with the design of the kind of the ship making it turreted, like, was there a reason behind that? Like, were you trying to, like, kind of emphasize the fact that it's meant to be, like, a kind of a the, the flagship and stuff? Like, it's meant to be more so, it like, you know, the turrets defend itself rather than... You know, right, yeah, it's supposed fixed. to kind of park itself there and and coordinate attacks, and the turrets are there to defend it while it's it's the central command authority on the on the battlefield. Ah, okay, okay. Which I, I will say I, I like because I'm a big fan of turrets, uh, so it's nice to see turrets. And then if, if you plan on making this ship, it'll probably cost around 600, 650k, depending on perks. So yeah, let's get into it. So I know just, just looking at it, it's it's quite tall, it's very imposing. And I will say the I think the, the bridge kinda like it stands out really well. We've got the docking port on the front, and then we've got these uh these braking thrusters, which when I tend to use builds, these are kind of my missile pods just because they look so cool. <laughs> it's kind of funny how when you look at a lot of kind of ship designers and stuff, they tend to like use certain structural pieces for basically things that they weren't intended for. I suppose that's kind of what happens when you're given a limited toolbox. You have to use your uh, your imagination. So you've got oh, the yeah. whole tech cargo bay, which very nice and spacious. I quite like. Like you were saying with uh, with the kind of you know this being the kind of flagship, uh, it seems like uh, you know all of the booty, like you know, like let's say the other ships do some stealing. I could imagine a portion of it would get sent to this ship, and then it'd be easier to kind of you know disembark it with that big cargo hold. Or cargo bay. Oh yeah. Probably. So we have straight away we're into an infirmary, which I quite like. Again, you can tell this crew they clearly care about keeping their uh, their guys alive because you know, a lot of spacers they wouldn't give two shits. You know they, oh no, their buddy died. Well now there's more share of loot for him. And then we've got a uh, Hope Tech Engineering Bay, which again. Used to initially not like these, but like from a roleplay point of view, I'm starting to like them more just because it kind of fits really well with these sort of builds where, you know, you have to, you don't have the luxury of bringing this thing back to a dry dock and kind of repairing it. So you kind of have to have a crew on standby pretty much 24-7, making sure everything works. Then we got the docking port at the front. Again, I really like the, I love the, the forward facing docking port. It kind of like, anytime I see it on a vessel, it just kind of reminds me of the, um, of like it being a kind of a ship where it's uh when it docks let's just say it it hasn't always gotten permission to dock bit of a boarding action then we go up to the next level here and we have a I believe this is, this is a tayo computer court very nice and then back here we have a is this this is a demos all-in-one berth the three by one or no, I think it's, is this, is it an all-in-one berth or is it living quarters? I would have to recheck the, uh, the schematics. I guess we'll find out in the breakdown. Yeah, we will find out in the breakdown. So something I'm noticing here is like with the, with the ship pieces, you're kind of mixing and matching. I'm assuming that's because again, with spacers, they don't really have access to a lot of parts. They kind of have to take what they get. Oh yes. And as part of the backstory. The ship that this one was built from was actually shot down in the, the closing, you know, moments of the war. And so they had to use that as kind of a base and add to it. So this is totally spacer and junker. Which I quite like. I really like that. I did notice recently, I was just checking your blog, and you've done a kind of a breakdown on how to do junker build, which I would definitely recommend you guys check out his blog. Phenomenal work, as always. Uh, we'll, we'll get a link in the description, and then at the end, he'll go give a shout out. So if we head across now, I believe... Okay, yeah, cool. We've done it all. Oh, we got one more level. We'll check the... Okay. Up here. Ah, this is the living quarters. Yeah, this is the Deimos. 
because you have the you can always tell because they have these really cool pictures and then we've got the uh the space hopper and stuff which progress is contagious okay <laughs> some of the pictures in this game they're so like uh they're like supposed to be like uplifting and very much the sort of thing you'd see in like your nine to five job you know you're trying to convince your workers that they matter when they know they don't matter they're <laughs> they're just there to clock in clock out we okay this is all on this side we're gonna drop down and we're gonna go across so across the way here we have the control station again it's the whole tech i notice uh with a few of these ships you've kind of went with the whole tech one is that your kind of your preferred when it comes to the control stations i i think it has to do more with the exterior of the hope tech I like the beveled ends of the Hope Tech Habs from the outside, and it just, I think it just happens because I like that, that look. Which again is, is fair. And then we've got, uh, again, we have the Hope Tech uh, Captain's Course here. Nice and cozy. I do tend to agree with you, though. Like, I feel like when it comes to, like, all of the Habs from an external point of view, the Hope Tech is probably the, the easiest looking. Like, you've got Nova Galactic, which is amazing interior, but exterior looks a bit funky. And then with like Deimos and like say Tayo, sometimes they're trying a bit too hard. Whereas Hope Tech, it's very much. I'm gonna check if I missed anything. Oh, down here we've got the workstation. Have I missed anything? If you can, just going off of. I, or... Yeah, I don't think so. I think you've you've caught everything. Did you go up to the top level on the other side though? I check. know you went up into that one thing, but just wanted to make sure that we didn't miss anything over here um, no i think we got everything well here's the top level uh yeah the living got, quarters yeah yeah okay so i think Perfect. we've got everything yep i will say if, if they of... ever have like a mod that gives you signs i will 100 percent be using them for my builds just <laughs> so i can be like bridge this way armory this way oh, yeah this um I kind of intended for this to be a little bit like a a, a map a rat's maze, you know, Which, for defensive purposes. Yeah, for that's gonna say for defensive purposes. And then we've got the overseer bridge, which is oh, as I fall down again. This is, I have to say, this is probably one of the best bridges in terms of looks. Uh, unlike the Stroud equivalent, your crewmates have actual seating, so that they won't bore you. And it's got a really nice view. So we're gonna take her off into space, see how she performs. Right. Uh, as always, I have a perk that increases my power by five. So for the sake of this review, we're not going to be using five power. But if I remember correctly, uh, this thing has more than enough power that it actually needs, which is always nice. I'll have to double check that. Uh... And I'm guilty of, of falling back on my anitronic fusion skill. So if it doesn't have enough power... Oh, okay, yeah, no, it, it actually does not. Uh, well, I mean, it, it. the thing is, it can... I feel like in combat, the particles, you know, you don't need your particles to be full. Weapon-wise, we've got... Both of the particles are turreted, so we can't fire them. But then, like I said, that or like I said, the design philosophy is it's meant to kind of park up and, you know, kind of defend itself with the turrets. Uh, base speed of... It's going to be 130, just because we've got a mix of Cs and Bs. Boost speed probably going to be 400 realistically. Yeah, 4 450, not too bad. Agility wise, we'll do a quick agility test. It's pretty agile. So obviously it's not the most agile, but it's. I really like when like ships are basically like they feel like proper heavy weighted ships. Although obviously we do the the okay it spins. I was expecting it to spin faster because for some reason ships like to do that. Anyway, we're going to head down to the planet surface and show you how he built it. All right, so here we are. We have it split into four sections. So we'll start at the top here. We've got the Overseer 400 bridge from Hope Tech, 340 cargo, two crew station. On top of that, we've got two of uh, the four PB300 auto alpha turrets from Ballistics Loose Incorporated. C-Class, 3899.99 range, 4 fire rate, 22 hull and shield damage, and 3 power. 
Behind that, we have a 500T Helium-3 tank from Ballistic Solution Incorporated, 210 Chump Fuel. We've got uh, one of the a uh, few... I think do we have many Amandons. We have... Two. Two. So one of the two Amandons. Uh, 271 engines, B-Class, 3 power, 26 5, 580 engine thrust, and 5250 maneuvering thrust. And then on top of here, we've got three Deimos radiators. Connecting them, we've got a Stroud engine bracer, and then we have a Deimos living quarters 3x1 with uh, one of the other, um, on an equipment plate, we have one of the other PB300s. And then behind that, on another equipment plate, we have a PB100 auto neutron turret. From Ballistic Solutions, B-Class, 3899.9 range, 5 fire rate, 16 hull and shield damage, and 3 power. We've got the Assurance SG-1800 shield generator from Sex to Shield System. C-Class, 12 power, 1600 shield health. Then we have two of the Hovetech radiators, and then we have a Hovetech nose B. And then on the outside here, we've got two Tayo mid-caps with... Uh, two equipment plates, and then we've got a PBO 100 and a PBO 300. We've got two Galleon S202 cargo holds here. They're from Tektra System, 950 each. And then we have a Supernova 220 engine from Rolodyne, C-Class 3 power, 257770, 7, 7, 770, there we go. Uh, engine thrust and six, uh, 7650 maneuvering. Next level of the vessel at the front here, we have another one of the PB 100s. Mounted on a Stroud nose cap E. We've got a Nova Galactic Armory 2x1, a Tayo Living Quarters 2x1 mid, a Deimos All in One Berth 3x1, and a Tayo Computer Core 2x1 mid with a Nova Engine Trust. We have a HAB, Hope Tech HAB Cross Brace uh, with a equipment plate and a Scan Jammer Multi Frequency uh, A Class. I think this is probably one of the first times I've ever called these out. Um, you basically just uh, make it so that you're less likely to be scanned. Uh, and then, or not that less likely to be scanned, you're less like what is it? You're less likely to be caught if you're smuggling? That's correct. Okay. And then we have our Hope Tech Nose B, Hope Tech Control Station 2x1, the Hope Tech Hab Spine, and a Hope Tech Captain's Quarters 2x1. Third level of the vessel, we've got uh, four uh, Hope 55 landing gear. From Hope Tech, four landing thrusts, two on this side, two on the opposite. And then we've got two 220CB landing gear from Deimos, uh, one landing thrust. We have a Nova engine strut here from Nova Galactic. We've got a 700T Helium-3 tank from Ballistic Solutions, 400 jump fuel. We've got a Hope Tech Pipes A mid. We've got the SF-40 Sheared Flow Reactor from Dogstar C-Class, 40 power, 1315 hull. Got the Apollo GV300 grab drive from Deep Course, C Class 11 power, 50 jump thrust, which gives us 30 light years. And then we have the other uh, Supernova engine. We have the Hope 11 Docker 4 from Hope Tech, the Hope Tech Hab Spine, the Nova Galactic Infirmary 2x1. I will say I like the color scheme. The Hope Tech Engineering Bay 3x1. We've got two engine bracers from Stroud, engine bracer A's, and a Deimos bracer A. We have a Nova engine strut. Uh, Hope Tech Workshop 2x1, another 500T Helium-3 tank, and then the last engine. And then obviously we've got the two Hope 55 landing gear and the 220 Deimos. So that is pretty much all of it. Uh, no, there's anything you want to cover that I may have missed or anything you kind of want to add? Uh, you'll need to uh, drop merge the... Uh, oh, the, yes, I will show you know, that actually. The Supernova engines. So if you try and place the engines initially, it won't let you. So one of the ways you can do it is put it up and then just drop it down like that. Just basically press Y. You can do the same thing on the other side if you wanted to. You just go... Oh, you can't go up with that one. Okay, yeah, let's just let's just do that method. Uh, just basically put it on that snap point, press Y, drop it down, and let go of it. And... I think, is that it then? Uh, anything else? Or are we good? Oh, wait, did I cover? I never covered the bottom, did I? I don't think you did. No, let me go back. Oh. That was my bad. Come on now. Okay, well, uh, we're going to really quickly pull off the bottom. I was wondering, because I, I didn't reference the... Um, the... The actual... Uh, these... 
uh, shielded pieces. Really quickly grab these. Um, I think that is everything of that one. Okay, so I'm going to pull that away. Okay. So then on the bottom here, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five of the Aculander 11 landing gear from Stroud Eklund, two thrust each. We've got two of the Caravel V102 shielded cargo holes for protector systems, 240 shielded cargo. Uh, we have the Hope 4 landing bay from Hope Tech. And then we have two more of the Galleon S202 cargo holes, 950 each. Structural pieces, we've got two Hope Tech thrusters here. We have a Hope Tech pipe A, and then we have a Deimos belly aft. And then that, um, let me just real quick put it back together. Uh, when you are building it, uh, there will be a gap initially, because um, like I was showing there, so that these pieces basically snap on to the uh, fuel tank. So yeah, so have I have I missed anything else, or are we good? I think we got it now. Okay, good, good. So yeah, um, as always, uh, Nogroth, thank you very much for letting me showcase your ships. Um, they are phenomenal and. Uh, I love the, the lore behind them in general, like the lore behind your ships, but obviously this this kind of faction in particular, it's, I feel like, uh, well, you know, not trying to criticize Bethesda's writing, there was a gap with the spacers, and I feel like you've done a really good job, and it's, again, it's something that I feel like could fit into the lore, uh, the, the faction. So uh, if you want to really quickly shout out your blog, so that people can check out not only these ships, but uh, some of your other... Uh, works absolutely and thanks for having me my uh, blog is stupid hyphen fat hyphen fingers dot blogspot dot com okay and i will obviously have a link in bio so thank you very much no and uh you will probably see no growth future uh feature in the channel in future he obviously uh was we we had the he was uh on our stream last week i think when this goes live might be the week after so he, yeah, um, look forward to seeing him again in the future. We'll be definitely showcasing some of his other builds. But uh, yeah, so thanks for, for dropping by. And uh, as always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this sort of content. Bye-bye. Uh,